Hey NetiSci students, it's Frida. I'm making a video because I'm going to be gone for class if you have class on Thursday and so I wanted to make this video so that you had an opportunity to see me solving some of these balancing equation problems so that we could get some good practice in for the test which is going to be happening next mod. If you understand how to do this, I need you to be a classroom leader. And that means that if you understand how to balance these equations really well, if we could form a couple little study groups during this mod after you watch this video so that your peers can help you to understand how to balance a little bit better. And there's a bunch of example problems that you picked up when you walked in. It's the green sheet. And I'm going to do some of these, but then basically you have to do some of these on your own because you're going to be tested on it come second half, and I want you to feel like you're going to be doing a great job. Now, to get us started, here's the steps. Okay, one through five. I've split number two into three parts, and let's just talk about them here for a second before we start balancing some reactions. So step one, you just count each side. And if you need to draw a line through the arrow like we've done on problems before, so if you see the arrow that separates the reactants for the product side, if you want to draw a line through that and draw it through the counting matrix, go ahead and do that. Step two is divided into three parts. You're going to find the side that has less of a particular element. That's an indication that the law of conservation of matter isn't happening with this recipe and that the ratio of ingredients in this recipe isn't correct. So you find the side that has less of an element. Remember that I recommend that if you need to balance like a metal or some non-metal and also oxygen, I recommend that you do oxygen last. It makes the reactions easier to balance usually. 2B, you're going to pick the blank on that side that has fewer elements so that you can change that element to one to a number that's going to help you to make it balance with the other side and understand the ratio of ingredients. And so if there's three blanks on a side and you're trying to balance sodium, you got to pick the blank that has sodium right after it, not any of the other blanks if they don't have sodium in them. And then 2C, you're going to put a number in the blank that is going to increase the number to, to be equal to the amount that you want. So let's say that you have one sodium on one side and three sodiums on the other side, and the subscript is uh, one on the left side and three on the right side. You will put a three in front of the side that has less because three times one is three, and that will give you the three sodium that you need. We'll work some examples here just in a second. Step three, after you put a number in a blank, you're going to recount by multiplying the number you put in the blank times all the subscripts that come directly after it in the chemical formula. So one blank modifies whatever comes after just that blank, not any other blanks. And so you recount everything, see what you fixed. Maybe you didn't fix anything, but you're paving the way in order to fix something in a later step because step four is you're going to repeat steps two and three as many times as you need to to get all the elements equal. And then once that happens, you go on to step five and you put a one in any empty blanks that are left over. So let's actually work some examples. Okay, here is the sheet that you picked up when you walked in. And I want to work number one and number three with you for this example, and then that will leave two, four, five, and six for you to balance on your own. You're going to notice that we have a little bit of a notation that we haven't uh, seen before, uh, and um, you'll notice that there are little parentheses like with G's after them, or uh, an S, and those just represent the state of matter that those compounds have to be in in order for this to, uh, to be a recipe that we can actually use. So I'm going to do one and three. You can follow along. When you're doing these, you can draw little counting matrices below each number, or you can do it on a separate sheet of paper. That's entirely up to you. The key is, is that we want to go through the process. Now, first things first, let's write down the type of reaction. I see C2H4. Well, that sounds like a CH compound plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water. You know, this was something very specific. This does not follow a general formula for a reaction. This follows the formula for a combustion reaction. CXHY plus O2 produces CO2 plus H2O. If it's exactly this, you know that it's a combustion reaction. Now, in this reaction, I basically just have C's, H's, and O's. So I'm going to draw my little counting matrix here for C's, H's, and O's. 
And I'm going to go ahead and draw my line separating the left-hand side from the right-hand side to make it easier to see. And then let's start balancing. Step one is we count. I have two C's, I have four H's, and I have two O's. On the right-hand side, I have one C. Got to be careful here. I have two O's here plus one O here is three O's there. And I have two H's on this side. Now, my advice to you, remember, is that if you have a choice between balancing hydrogen and oxygen, always do the oxygens last. Because just by working on balancing these things, you can sort of figure out what's happening, and it often makes balancing the oxygens easier. So I'm going to balance both C's and H's before I get down to oxygens. Okay, so first let's do C's. Step 2A. I'm going to find a side where I have less. I have less stuff on the left side, on the, sorry, the right side for both the C's and the H's. Okay? And so step 2B, I'm going to find a blank. I'm going to start with the C's that can change my C's. This blank has C's after it. This blank does not. So for 2C, I'm going to put a number in this blank that will get the C's to be the number that I want so we know that we're getting the right ratio of ingredients. So I'm going to put a 2 here. 2 times 1, step 3 is we recount, that's 2 C's, 2 times 2 is 4 O's plus 1 O, that brings us up to 5 O's. So our O's are still kind of out of whack and everything, but at least we're making progress with the C's. Okay, and then for H's, I have 2 on the right side, we go to the side where we have less, find a blank that has H's, I'm going to put a 2 in the blank, 2 times 2 Step three, we recount, is four H's. Two times one is two O's, plus the four O's from over here is six total O's. And this is a good thing. It's a good thing that we balance the C's and H's first because now we can go back to the left-hand side where we have less O's, and this is a pretty easy fix for fixing our oxygens, okay? Because three times two is six oxygens, C's are equal, H's are equal, O's are equal. We know that this is a correct ratio of ingredients, but we got to get all of the ratio of ingredients. Going down to step five, we put a one in any blanks that are left over. So there's that first one balanced. Okay, let's go ahead and skip down to number three. Now, number three looks kind of crazy. Okay, it's got this NH4 in parentheses. And remember, I told you about the shortcut method for this one. If we see parentheses around something, we might be able to take a shortcut and count the number of NH4s on each side. But there are no NH4s on the right side over here. Okay, so that's an indication to us that we cannot use the shortcut method. If the shortcut method is freaking you out, go ahead and count all the atoms individually. I will tell you that number two, you can use the shortcut method for NO3s. And if we go down the list here and check out 4, 5, and 6, you can use the shortcut method for number 5 with both CO3s and NO3s if you want to draw these parentheses around these. Okay, and then for number 6, you can also use the shortcut method if you want to count the number of NO3s on each side. All you got to do is put parentheses around those NO3s. So if you want to use the shortcut method, great. If the shortcut method freaks you out, you don't have to do it. I'm going to count all these individually for number 3. So I have N's, H's, C's, and O's. Before I actually start counting them up, let's figure out what type of reaction we have. Well, what's going on here? I can just maybe get this to focus. Oops. So are we trying to figure it out? Oh, it's coming. It's happening. Come on, focus. This is not the best document camera in the world. I thought it was going to be awesome when I bought it, but it's turning out not to be that awesome. So, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to, let's think and figure out what type of reaction this is. I have one big substance on the left-hand side, and then that looks like it's splitting apart into three different things. So splitting, what does splitting sound like? Splitting sounds like decomposition. This is a decomposition reaction. And if seeing the letters helps you, this is ABC being split apart into A plus B plus C. Okay, that's the general formula of that reaction. 
Now let's balance it. Okay, I'm going to count the number of N's, the number of H's, the number of C's, and the number of O's on each side. This one's going to be a little complex because notice on the right-hand side how we have O's in two different places. So the rule is, is that if you see O's that look complicated or, or are in multiple different locations, you're going to want to do those last. Okay, so let's start counting. If you see a, a number outside of a subscript or a subscript outside of a parentheses, that number gets multiplied times everything inside the parentheses. So this is 2 times 1 is 2 n's. 2 times 4 is 8 h's. There's 1 c because there's no subscript after it, and there's 3 o's. Now we go to the right side of the equation. I see 2 h's here plus 3 h's over here is 5 h's. I see 1 o here plus 2 o's here is 3 o's. I see 1 n right here, and I see 1 c right there. So n's and h's are both out of wax. whack. Gosh, an 8-5 split? I don't, I'm not sure what to do with that, but I can do a 2 to 1 pretty easily, right? So I go to the side of the equation, step 2, where we have less of something. I have less of 1 over here. I got a step 2b, find a blank where I can change my ends. Well, there's no ends right after this blank. There's no ends right after this blank. Hey, there's the ends. So step 2c, I'm going to put a number in a blank. 2 times 1 is 2 ends. I fixed my ends. 2 times 3 is 6 h's plus 2 h's is 8 h's. Wow, that fixed the h's too. This is an example one that looks incredibly frightening on first inspection, but so long as you're counting everything correctly, it ended up being pretty simple. So this is just 1, 1, and 2. So there we go, all balanced. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to uh, ask somebody in the room who's identified as your group leader. You got to practice working some of these on your own, okay? Um, number four especially is one that you should be able to do, okay? Notice that there's a 2-3 split with oxygen. I'd recommend for number four. Sorry for that bell. I recommend for number four that you go with the lowest common product method for fixing the oxygens, okay? In other words, the lowest common product of two and three is six. So shoot for six oxygens on each side of the reaction for this one. And then the rest of them, you just got to make sure that you count correctly. Remember, anything, any number that you see outside of parentheses, you got to multiply what's inside the parentheses times that number if you're counting all the atoms individually. If you're using the shortcut method and are doing one with parentheses, then that's just the same as uh, if it were those things were set in stone. You know, maybe we should work an example of this just to be sure. It never hurts to be sure. So I'm going to go up to number two. I'm going to do one, two, and three with you. And you can do four, five, and six on your own to practice. So what type of reaction? Well, what's happening here is we have AG getting kicked off on its own. And we have Cu swooping in and taking its place. Okay, the general formula for this is A plus BC produces AC plus B. So this is a single replacement reaction. I'm going to use the shortcut method for this one. If the shortcut method freaks you out, you don't have to do this. So with the shortcut method, there's only three things we got to keep track of. CU's, AG's, separate this with a line so we're not confused, and I'm going to treat NO3, since it's parentheses, as its own thing. Okay, there's one CU, there's one AG, there's one NO3, because I don't see any subscript after the NO3, so it's the same as there being one. On the right-hand side, there's one CU, there's a subscript 2 after this parentheses, so there's two NO3s, and I see one AG. So I need to fix the NO3s first because it's the only thing that's different. Okay, I go to the side where we have less, 2A. I pick a blank that has NO3s, not this blank, but this blank, and 2C, I'm going to put a number here that's going to give me the number of NO3s that I want. 2 times 1 is 2 AGs. We recount anything that that changes. 2 times 1 is two NO3s. Now we got to fix our AGs. Well, there's only one blank on the right-hand side that has AGs, 
So I put a 2 there, 2 times 1, 2 AGs all balanced. We put a 1 in any blanks that are left over. Okay? So that's balancing chemical reactions. I hope that makes sense to you. And uh, we're going to take a quiz during the second half of class. This is not your last opportunity to do practice. You can work on four, five, and six with a trusted peer, somebody who really knows what they're doing. And depending upon who my sub is, my sub might be able to help you too. And so there should be lots of resources in the classroom, but you got to have the courage to ask somebody. We are at crunch time. You've learned a lot over the last couple weeks. Now it's time to prove to me that you understand it. And so have a great day. Sorry I can't be in class today, and I will catch you later. Bye-bye.